Hello, everyone, and welcome to Masters of Digital Transformation, a podcast from AIM10X dedicated to uncovering the stories behind the world's leading change agents and most valuable learnings from our community of global innovators. I'm your host, Caleb Masters, and as always, we're here to provide you with actionable insights from today's greatest thought leaders to guide and accelerate your journeys. AIM10X is a knowledge and networking hub for leaders passionate about digitally transforming enterprises for better decision making and a better planet. You can learn more by heading to aim10x.09solutions.com. The word sustainability has become something of a buzzword, losing some of the meaning it once had for a lot of professionals working in the supply chain. But I really wanted to dig into that for today's episode. According to the EPA, 90% of a company's environmental impact comes from its supply chain. And despite 80% of senior supply chain executives stating that they are putting an increased emphasis on environmental and social governance initiatives in a recent Ernst & Young survey, nearly one in five of those execs do not have a sustainability strategy or know where to begin, with another half of those executives stating that they don't have an integrated scorecard to measure supply chain sustainability results. So I think it's fair to say that many organizations are continuing to struggle to understand their true environmental impact because most of it occurs in the faraway corners of their supply chains. Without visibility, companies cannot meaningfully reduce their carbon footprint, making the fight against climate change virtually impossible. And I know a question that many of our listeners have had or continue to have is, How can supply chain leaders leverage the tools and technologies out there to achieve the visibility required to drive meaningful business results? So in today's episode, I'm thrilled to be joined by Monty Montaner, the former Chief Sustainability Officer of Novartis, to hear her perspective on the role technology plays in achieving supply chain sustainability. We're going to start by learning a little bit more about Monty's transition into the role of Chief Sustainability Officer at Novartis. We'll also cover the value of leading sustainability initiatives with a focus on people, health, and the planet. And then we'll close out the conversation by talking about how to leverage technology to increase visibility and help build more sustainable supply chains. Without further ado, though, I'd like to introduce today's guest. Monsi Montaner is the former Chief Sustainability Officer at Novartis, where for three years, she led the environmental sustainability agenda across the whole of the company, including the mammoth task of decarbonizing their entire supply chain. Monsi, welcome to Masters of Digital Transformation. Thank you very much. It's really a great pleasure to be here with you. Well, Monsi, we have a really big topic that we're going to get to here in a little bit related to sustainability. But I really want to start by getting to know you a little bit better. You have had such a rich, exciting career being a woman in a chief sustainability role. There's very few chief sustainability officers out there, let alone a woman in the role. What led you to the world of sustainability and supply chain? Oh, thank you very much for that. I love that question. I have been more than 30 years uh, working in the healthcare space, very much focused on quality operations and business transformation, because I want really to make sure that I could make an impact. And human health and planetary health are super very much interlinked. And then it is when it comes my passion as well to do something different and impactful at the same way from a sustainability point of view in order to bring planetary health in a good state, and but also at the same time to have a, a really a fair society, which really everyone can really feel comfortable. And that's why I was really changing gears in my career. And then I want to do something completely different from my background, but with a lot of passion and commitment to do it. Right. So this is something that really means a great deal to you, like building a better earth a safer earth, better environment for uh, both yourself, future generations, but also for folks to work in. What would you say throughout your career was one of the biggest challenges that you've faced so far? So mainly one of the the, the biggest challenges definitely it was how you are able to convince or how are you able to convey a message for something completely new in the organization. So sometimes organizations, they are not yet ready for that transformation. So how much you needed to uh, have a, a narrative, a good narrative, which really have a, a really a positive impact and creating value for the company. Are those organizations ready for that change? Whatever it is. And sometimes you don't have that patience, but it's important to listen to everybody, to have a collaborative approach, to be able then to make a change that is really impactful in that organization. 
you've been in such a unique position and you continue to be sort of a trailblazer in the space of sustainability, but also being a woman working in the area of supply chain. So could you elaborate here for me? I mean, how has your gender played into the challenges that you've faced throughout your career, especially when we're thinking about working in supply chain tech? Yes. Uh, the supply chain mainly is very much driven by male. I have been really very fortunate to bring diversity in those positions that I have, which were really very working very closely with operations and supply chain. And then to have the opportunity to raise my voice and to bring uh, challenges in a different way and also solutions in a different way. But it's true that in mainly in the early stages uh, of my career, it was quite challenging because we don't know each other. We don't understand each other sometimes. But fortunately, uh, they are much more inclusive to organizations, less biased as well, which can really help us really to be having a much more constructive dialogue and definitely a much better positive impact in those organizations especially in sustainability, these are really unprecedented challenges that have never been faced before. Being able to bring all of these different points of view to the table, why is it so important to have that diversity of views in order to solve the greater challenges related to the environment? So when you are bringing diverse backgrounds, diverse thinking, you are creating then an environment to be much more creative. And then you will bring much more creative solutions to the problems that you're having because you have different perspectives. You have different ways to look at the problem. Only with that diversity, you will be much better to providing a solution. That's why I'm so passionate on that. But at the same time, it's very, very important to have the environment for people to feel safe to talk and to discuss the topic as they believe it, bringing their perspectives bringing how they think that they needed to really approach the problem or the solution in that manner. Because then it is when you are really having a super rich conversations, which then is what I say will bring a very, very good solutions, which is what all of us we want, right? To be able to really to, to help us in the overall challenges that we are facing in the overall sustainability journeys. Most definitely. Maybe you could elaborate here. I mean, what would you say excites you personally? about the sustainability conversation that's unfolding uh, within the supply chain leadership today? So as I told before, I am pharmacist by education. So really, I started my career as a passion to do something positive for the human being. My main mission in this planet, it is really to bring medicines to allow people to be healthier. How you can extend a people's life if we have a planet which is sick, right? So I was thinking beyond the human being. I was really thinking in in terms, okay, where we are living, unfortunately, it's also sick. And that's why also I, I realized, and also through a lot of research, that because the planet, it is sick, we are having much more infectious diseases than it was some years ago. We are having much more respiratory diseases that we have before. There are countries and there are places that people does not have access to drinking water because of challenges on the planet as well, and et cetera, and et cetera. So as you can see, there is a lot of correlation between human being health and planetary health. And that it is, was the mission and what was really the, the purpose driven uh, for all of that to really start to say, okay, I want to do something different. I wanted to make an impact in this society in a different way as I have done before. And that's why I started to to go on the sustainability journey as well. That's such a powerful idea that you you set out to provide medicines to the sick and applying that same philosophy on a global level. These are huge, complex challenges that we're looking at in sustainability that affect everybody on the planet. While sustainability is its own unique challenge, It's also really important to create a healthy environment to enable the best results. What environmental responsibility do you think that business leaders have for the planet? They have a lot of responsibility. They cannot escape of that responsibility. No way. So they need to make sure that in their companies, um, through their supply chains and through their organizations to reinforce and to establish a very thorough sustainability strategy in the company. That it is not really a nice to have, it's a must. And honestly, the clock is tick-tack 
really, really very fast, unfortunately. And that's why that only the ones which are early adopting to that, that will be really the ones will be surviving in the future. So I think that's why I, I am impressed by leaders, which they are already doing that, which they are really changing the supply chain. They are really connecting with platforms, which allows them to go faster on that journey because they know when they will have that, either they will be the ones that will be much more competitive into the market as well because sustainability, it's not expensive. Honestly, it is a cheaper topic, but it's true that initially we need to invest money in platforms on technologies to allow us to go to that journey. But that means that then you will have a company in this planet that supports on that journey. The leaders need to have a courage. They need to be ambitious. They need to have a critical thinking because they need really to challenge the status quo of their organization. And they need to be very collaborative because they need to build bridges with the, their peers, with the customers, with the clients, with the shareholders, etc. And finally, they need really to feel that they have the responsibility and accountability to make it. Wow. I think that's a, a big challenge that you put out there, uh, but it really outlined sort of the, the core ideas and core values that any sort of business or supply chain leader working to create a sustainable supply chain should have today. Going back to some of the stats I was reading earlier, there are a majority of supply chain executives that stated in this Ernst & Young study that they're putting an increased emphasis on the environmental social governments, again, 80% of those folks that said one out of five said they don't have a sustainability strategy or really know where to begin. So there's clearly a lot of uncertainty uh, or challenges related with getting one of these programs off the ground. From your perspective, having worked in sustainability, what are the key challenges that you see as slowing sustainable supply chain progress? I think that the first one is exactly where I need to start on that, because that's true that the problem, it is big, but definitely you cannot tackle everything because it's impossible. So you need to prioritize. So I think the first one is really to understand what sustainability means for that company. That's the first thing that the company needs to define. So where I want to be much more focused, I want to be much more focused on the environment. I want to be much more focused on the social part. I want to be much more focused on the economy part. So where you will want to be focused on that. And once you have that clear, then you need to start to define what are the targets and the ambitions that you want to drive and help you to start to roll out a plan and learn from that. Because honestly, as soon as you are progressing on that plan, there are things that will go well and there are things that you need to, to change and be transparent and learning from each other on that. So for me, that's the first one challenge. The second one, as I already said before, is the organization ready for that? Because as I told you, you need really to courageous people to do that change. So is it really possible that the organization is ready to make that happen? If yes, then move on and go ahead with that. And the third one, you need to be also quite humble to learn from others, to learn from other sectors, to learn either from competitors, because there are people who are progressing quite nicely in all of that. And then you don't need to, to really, again, to start to do something and reinvent the wheel. You can really replicate things that are already happening and they are really positive impact. So, be humble to steal with pride what others are doing to replicate into your organization. Given the complexity of this challenge, I think if we're all sharing the knowledge that can help us increase the speed in which sustainability initiatives are adopted. Speaking of the adoption of sustainability initiatives, though, I imagine that it's not just the chief sustainability officer or the supply chain executives who are owning these sorts of initiatives for sustainability. You've got to get your CEO on board. You've got to get other executives on board. Just kind of going back to what you talked about earlier in the conversation about the importance of developing a narrative to share with your leaders. What are your secrets to success in gaining the buy-in that you needed for the sustainability initiatives at Novartis? 
Yeah, definitely the first one, of course, to have a very strong support by the CEO and by the board. That's for me, it's crucial in any organization to, for you to be successful because then really gives a clear direction how serious it is the topic into the organization. Then secondly, you need to make sure that key um, leaders in the organization, that they have really an important voice and an important role on that transformation, supply chain operations, but for example as well, development because R&D, because if you wanted to build or to develop a product in the future uh, to be sustainable, you need to start from now how you needed to change the, the way that you are developing, manufacturing that product or distributing that product, right? And then you need as well finance because you will need money to start with that. So there are some key leaders which because of their position, you needed to have a very good conversations uh, to let them know and understand why their role is so relevant and to be partnering with them in order to be successful in that journey. Once you've identified these key positions that you've already talked about, how did you approach breaking the ice or finding success and winning them over to your cause? That's why it's so important, the narrative here, because you cannot go say, okay, I have a... Uh, a sustainability journey, and then I need you, ABC. You need to really to build credibility on that planning and credibility on that strategy. But at the same time, you need to know very well the company. If you don't know very well the company, so what's the purpose of the company? So what is really what the company wants to play and win in which area or not? Because then you need to be able to translate the strategy that the company has and incorporating that strategy into the sustainability strategy. Otherwise, it would be completely separated in an asylum organization, which is exactly what you don't want to have that because then you will be not successful. So the narrative, and that narrative, you need to be able to articulate it in the way that they see that this is really creating value for the organization. How help that company really to have a better, for example, impact in share price? How it is as well having a better impact on product into the market? How it's getting a better impact on your employee engagement? Because you will see that maybe you have a higher level of retention or you are having people who are much more interested to join your company because you are serious on sustainability. So you need to translate that into these different dimensions for them to understand the positive impact and how this is really creating value to the company. Once you have that, then it is easy. But for, to do this means that you need to know very well the company. You need to listen very well that leaders, what they expect and what they need. To know very well the strategy of the company. And then, of course, then preparing a very solid and positive a strategy to help them really to move forward. I think those are all really good tips for anyone uh, who's listening today who might want to uh, pitch anything to their executives, especially related to sustainability. I want to hone in here a little bit. You, you talked earlier in your personal journey about the importance of healing the sick, providing solutions to some of the more complex issues that we're looking at related to sustainability. How did you approach developing a philosophy for yourself that you shared with your teams? Develop a philosophy on the relationship between healthy people and a healthy planet during your tenure in the field? It was coming very much from my side, definitely, because when you start a new role, which was my case, which I didn't have a full uh, knowledge about sustainability. I have some knowledge of sustainability, but not the profound knowledge of sustainability. But I have a passion and commitment for that, which that means that when a leader um, have a passion and commitment, but does not have the technical or mm -hmm. background, you need to learn quickly on that. And that means that you need to listen to many people and to different people to help you to educate on the topic. And this is what they have done in that period of time. Listen a lot, my team, listen a lot, peers, listen a lot, other people, other sectors, and very good research, reading very good research about that. And then uh, having a, a, a team and a workshop, pulling ideas and for all of us to be able to define what it is the, the right strategy. What does it mean sustainability for the company, right? But for this means that you need to do a lot of homework initially. 
And then it's what I say, it needs to resonate for what is the mission and the purpose of the company, but also needs to resonate to you, to yourself. And that's why I felt that linkage, because then when there is a clear linkage, when there is really a clear understanding of the why, then it's easy to move forward. But you need just to have that why very clear in your narrative. Otherwise, people will not really be able to to understand and to, to have a click in the, the way that they need to do things differently. And of course, to have their passion to support us in this journey. Well said, Monsi. I want to shift gears here and talk a little bit more about your philosophy related to the tools and technology out there. What has been your philosophy on using technology throughout your career, even before your time joining Novartis? I love technology because technology helps a lot, mainly to, to go to much more further in the overall uh, transformation. One of the first things which I have been using technology, mainly the system, it's helping me to collect data. Data is one of the challenges that the companies are facing because it's very difficult to have that. It is quite a scattered, so it is across all the different organizations. Technology helps you a lot, first of all, to understand your problem from the different dimensions and to help you to forecast or to predict what's coming next. That's one thing. Secondly, technology, I think, is also another enabler to help you on the solutions as you have really data to allow you to understand what's happening, but at the same time, helping you to predict what will be coming next can also bring opportunities, how you can mitigate the challenges that you have. So that for me, it's why that technology is the key enabler for a successful of the sustainability in the future. There's so many different data points that need to be taken into account in order to uh, achieve the supply chain transparency that is required to even have meaningful conversations about carbon emissions, for example. No, no, absolutely, because all the companies in all the sectors we have supply chain, right? So it's one thing, common pattern across all the different organizations. And maybe what I am working today, I am also a supplier to you in the future or now. So that's why the connection in the supply chain through the different parties, through the different customers, to the different service providers will help us really end to end to really to fight against that challenge that we have with the overall sustainability. That's why it's so important to link it everything together. But at the same time, that's why it's so important to have transparency in all of that data, to understand what it is and how each other can contribute in the supply chain of the other companies as well. I want to provide some actionable perspectives from you for our listeners related to achieving those sustainability goals. According to that Ernst & Young report I referenced earlier, Although increased end-to-end -end supply chain visibility is still listed as a top priority, it remains a work in progress. Only about 4 in 10 respondents, or more specifically, I think it was 37% of respondents, said they have actually seen increasing visibility. Monsi, how have you approached solving this lack of visibility and supply chain challenge during your tenure at Novartis? So mainly it is to have a clear understanding, of course, of the pitfalls, right, in, in the supply chain. And then... Definitely for that, there are things you can do quite fast, uh, mainly, for example, uh, changing shipments uh, from air to sea, wherever it's possible. But there also there are other opportunities that you can do to either bring much more efficiency on the process because we see that sometimes supply chain is quite complex. But then it's really very important to have tools to help you to understand that pitfalls and how you can really change that bringing a sustainability solutions. The challenge it is that there are not yet there a lot of solutions to help you and you on this. That's why you need to test initially. Now, in the last months, I have seen very nice platforms. Uh, also, the, the one from 09, for example, it's a great platform to help leaders to do that change. But when I started uh, some years ago, there was nothing so much available. I really, really support the idea to connect with this type of platforms because this can really help you and facilitate it a lot, the transition. And then you don't need to, to waste time trying to identify by yourself. But that is why I think it's super important to have that platforms, not only now on the early stages, but much more even in the future, because 
the dream should be that when uh, um, you wanted to put a new product into the market or you wanted to do a change in a, the product in the market, thanks to that platform, so that so digital uh, solutions that you can have, already could forecast what is the impact on that change, on that decision in the sustainability targets or in the sustainability journey. But we need to start to build already an organization to help us really to drive for the future. Well said. And uh, thanks for sharing a little bit about your perspective, uh, not only on the role of tech, but also how the tech can really shine a light on what's possible in terms of companies hitting their targets for sustainability and carbon emissions. As we start to wind down, what sorts of questions do you think supply chain leaders or executives should be asking these potential partners out there as they seek to work with someone to help them achieve these really ambitious goals? Yeah, so I think, uh, first of all, it is definitely how easy it is to have the data available. Number two, it is because we need to report a lot of the data externally, the way that the data it is collected, it helps to understand the regulations that are coming because, as you know, it's coming a lot of regulations and then you need to be able to interpret that regulations properly. And the way that you are pulling the data should help you to be able to report all of that data in a proper manner. And third, as already mentioned, how this data can help me to anticipate potential challenges in the future to translate then that challenges into opportunities for the business, right? So then for me, it will be the third question that I will also will bring in that discussions as well. Excellent. Well, Monsi, uh, this has been such a great conversation. Thanks so much for your time today. Uh, before we close out the conversation, I just wanted to bring it back to you, your career, and your, your perspective on leadership for our listeners. So for those of uh, our listeners who are tuning in today and they're leading teams in transformation and initiatives, what parting words of wisdom or key learnings would you like to share with them as you sign off? So I think that the, the, one of the, the learnings it is uh, for you to develop yourself you are the owner of your development career. It's great to have mentors, to have coaches, and to have leaders to help you on that, on that journey. But uh, you need to do a self-reflection. What do you want and why do you want that? And drive for that and fight for that. Because I realize that as much clear you are and what do you want to do it and how you are able to articulate it in the way that how... I can be really the right leader for that, then it's much more easy to move forward. Secondly, people are, for me, the most important asset in any organization. So we need to take care of our people. We need to listen to our people. We need to develop our people. And we should not judge our people. So we need to understand from where they are coming in the future, where they are coming with that different thoughts. So spend time with the people because it is a rich conversation from in the both sides. So then it's why I think it would be really great to, to also to spend the time on that as well. And the third one, uh, learning that they have, it is sometimes don't be so much impatient on what do you want to do it. So things happen because it needs to happen. To jump quickly to any uh, decision or to any solution, uh, spend time to learn from different perspectives for you to have a much more data, to have much more facts to help you to do a better decision. So don't jump quickly. Monsi Montaner, former Chief Sustainability Officer at Novartis, thank you so much for joining Masters of Digital Transformation today. Thank you very much. You are very welcome. And thank you, listeners, for tuning in to today's episode featuring Monty Montaner, the former Chief Sustainability Officer of Novartis. Now, if you enjoyed today's conversation and want to learn more about sustainability from the world's leading change agents, you can join our community of global innovators by heading to aim10x.09solutions.com and signing up today. Aim10x is a knowledge and networking hub for leaders passionate about digitally transforming enterprises for better decision making and a better planet. To keep up with more episodes of this podcast, Masters of Digital Transformation, please head on over to Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or your preferred podcast app. Give us a follow or subscribe, and then leave us a rating and a review to help us get discovered by more listeners just like you. And you can learn even more about the activities and learning opportunities available through the Aim10x Innovators Network by following Aim10x on LinkedIn. 
Before we close out today's conversation and we go into the summer break, I wanted to leave you with this final thought from the late astronomer and planetary scientist Carl Sagan. He once said, anything else you're interested in is not going to happen if you can't breathe the air and drink the water. Don't sit this one out. Do something. You are, by accident of fate, alive at an absolutely critical moment in the history of our planet. Thank you so much for joining us, everyone. As I said, we'll be taking a short break for the month of August while many of you are vacationing and enjoying your summer holidays. And we'll be back again this fall in September with more conversations from the world's leading change agents. 